There have been a lot of videos so far made by much bigger channels than my own, like the Critical Drinker and Neurotic, on talking about how bad the TV show Seahulk really is. So I want to do something a little different here. Mainly I want to compare Seahulk with another successful superhero TV show and see where everything went wrong with it. Examine what makes a superhero so successful and how Seahulk makes a mess of everything partly because it deviates from the formula that we come to expect when we sit down and watch a TV show with superheroes or vigilantes and all the tropes that go with it. Now I'll get to all of that in a moment. But for now, I want to say that despite what critics will have you know, Seahulk isn't just a mediocre, fun and charming MCU comedy. Oh no, this is an astoundingly terrible show. I mean, it's quite an achievement, actually, if you think about it. Making something that is so reviled by so many people so fast, filled with boring and asinine storylines, paper-thin characters, awful CGI and dialogue. And as for the comedy, well, I would say it's comedy in name only. There are only a handful of moments in all nine episodes where there's something, anything really, that even resembles a funny moment or a scene, and that usually comes from some guest actors that actually have some comedy chops and good timing to go with it, and not from its main characters. Namely Wong from Doctor Strange and Sea Hulk's father, and maybe the immortal dude in episode 6. Now, before I go on, I have to say that this is a new and small channel, and we need your help in order to grow. So if you don't mind subscribing and liking the video, it would be very much appreciated. Now let's get back to the review. Sea Hulk really is a show made with almost zero effort and thought behind it. The breaking of the fourth wall and the use of anti-structure going against the norm of a traditional narrative with a cartoon style storytelling in the final episode, all of that should have been a good idea. And on paper they are. But when Seahulk does it, none of it works. The breaking of the fourth wall doesn't feel innovative and funny like it did when Ryan Reynolds did it on Deadpool, or charming and heartwarming when Phoebe Waller-Bridge did it on Fleabag. And it doesn't work in Seahulk simply because the comedy just isn't there. And these scenes don't really add anything to the character and the story. I mean, you could just remove them and I don't think you would lose anything important. And furthermore, the comedy is absent not only in the writing, but it doesn't exist on an individual level from all its main characters, even Tatiana Maslany herself, who is the lead. But I want to be clear here and say that I don't think this is her fault. She has demonstrated again and again in Orphan Black of how good of an actress she really is. But in Seahulk, the material is so bad that she doesn't really have much to work with. And the same goes with Jamila Jamil, who was really good in The Good Place, but here she doesn't have a single funny line in the entire first season. The storylines in Seahawk are so uninteresting at their core that they don't really belong in the superhero comedy genre. We have episodes that deal with the dating life of its main character. Who's gonna be Jane Walters next date? Why can't she find a boyfriend? Why doesn't a lover of hers answer back her text? Shit, with plot lines like that, the show is basically sex in the city, but with a Hulk. And I'm pretty sure that's how the showrunner pitched it on the executives at the studio, and uh, they ate it all up. In order to understand why Seahulk is in such a dire lack of quality, we must first have to take a look at what makes a show, and specifically a superhero show, a successful drama or a comedy that through its serialized or episodic storylines can create engaging and compelling stories that will keep the audience interested and glued to the screen. And to do all that, we have to compare Seahulk with another superhero show that has a similar protagonist with the same job, albeit with different goals. And since Seahulk managed to disgrace Daredevil by making him behave like he's some kind of college girl that does the walk of shame after a night of drinking and sex, oh man, don't get me started on this scene, what kind of deep emotional issues do the writers of Seahulk have to make Daredevil look like a fool just so they can prop up their own character? And even in a scene that's not funny to begin with. Anyway, for all the reasons stated above, let's compare the fuck out of Daredevil and Seahulk. The first question that comes to mind is, what does a successful superhero show even look like? Well, foremost, it needs a protagonist that is torn between his normal everyday life and his double life as a superhero or as a vigilante. Both Seahulk and Daredevil have characters that are lawyers and have superpowers that themselves did not ask. 
Daredevil got his powers as a child after an accident, and Jane Walters became She-Hulk after some extremely convenient circumstances that left Hulk bleeding and somehow, with one contrivance after another, his blood got inside Jane Walters' open wound and presto, now she has superpowers. Really, this is what the writers of She-Hulk are going with? That in all those Marvel movies, Hulk has battled gods and monsters from other planets and they have barely made a dent at him. And now, somehow, at the exact right time, we find him bleeding in an accident? Right, right, great show. Both of those TV shows, Daredevil and Seahulk, have a similar structure. They use the court cases as obstacles for the normal lives of its main characters, and usually these cases get intertwined with their superhero identities and storylines. And we can see how each case affects the characters and propels them forward in a new direction, burdened with choices that makes their lives difficult. Done correctly, as it was with Daredevil, a superhero show like that has clear boundaries of where the plot and the character is going, and that can create compelling and engaging stories. The light and the dark of storytelling, the everyday life drama and the superhero action set pieces are the yin and yang, the perfect blend of each half, and in the end, as we have known with Daredevil, you find yourself watching a great TV show. The chasm between these two identities can be found in virtually in every character that is leading a secret life as a superhero or a vigilante of some kind, from Spider-Man to Batman and others. And all the things that the superhero character is doing in this double life is putting a strain on their relationship with their friends and co-workers and their personal well-being, both on a physical and a mental note. That is the formula of a successful superhero show. And it works really well, if you follow it at least. But in Seahulk, its main character doesn't do any of that. I mean, zero, nothing. But to be more precise, Seahulk is doing the exact opposite of the very basic things of what you need to do in order to tell even the most basic of superhero stories. You see, in Seahulk, the dangerous alter ego identity that causes problems for the main character in their everyday lives isn't Seahulk, the giant green superpowered being, but the everyday normal person, Jane Walters. Because of her superpowers, in the first episode, Jane Walters gets fired and can only find another job as a lawyer by becoming Seahulk. We are constantly being told of how great Seahulk is. She excels at everything. She's a better lawyer, she's more confident, more beautiful. But her normal everyday identity, Jane Walters, is none of that. She's timid, unsure of herself, and the writers constantly try to say how unworthy she is of the world around her. She can't find a date, people don't respect her, and they treat her like trash. I mean, you have scenes where Jane goes to a wedding and the other women humiliate her by suggesting that she should clean and wash some clothes of the other guests. Them, the writers of the show really, really hate Jane Walters, their main character. They hate a normal, competent working woman that really, if you think about it, has a good life. She has a great job, she has her own house, she's free to do whatever she wants. The actress, Tatiana Maslany, is a beautiful woman, but the show does everything it can to make her look much worse than what she actually is. Nothing on her really fits, be it clothes or hairstyles or even her own behavior. The show forces her character to be this pathetic shell of a woman that has to sit and be mistreated by other people for really no reason at all. And not only that, her mistreatment comes really from within herself, where she constantly makes terrible choices both in her personal life and her work life. When she goes to a family dinner, she feels jealous that all the attention of the family goes to her cousin that got a promotion and not her. She feels because she just lost her job, everyone should be consoling her. But that jealousy doesn't make a whole lot of sense because her cousin is the loser of the family and she's a lawyer with a good track record and stellar reputation. It's just a matter of time until she gets back on her feet by finding another job and that's exactly what happens later in the episode. The mistreatment that she gets as a character feels like the writers thought that Jane Walters has to suffer in order for the audience to get a laugh. Much in the same way that when someone slips on the banana peel and falls down, hurting themselves in the process, the audience should laugh at their expense. But if you think about it, that's really a heartless approach to comedy, because her suffering doesn't have any other purpose. It doesn't push her character forward, nor does it swing the plot in another direction. It's there for the sole reason to make her look small and insignificant, and what, somehow this is supposed to be funny? 
come on. The show is so intent on making its main characters suffer for our supposed enjoyment that Jen Walters has to go through one bad date after another with men so out of touch of reality. I mean, really grown adult men talking and behaving like prepubescent children? Come on, they're just caricatures of the so-called toxic masculinity trope that we hear so much in the recent years. Everything Jane Walters does causes a ton of problems that only her alter ego, Seahulk, can fix. Jane Walters can't find a date? Oh, no worries. Seahulk can do that. She's taller, stronger, more beautiful, more confident. Now I have to mention here how silly all of that really are. The men who would go on a date and have sex with a giant, super-powered green woman are not exactly keepers. They are exactly the kind of people that would be considered groupies with fucked up tastes that are bound to leave you standing at the first sign of trouble. And that's exactly what happens with Seahulk's one night stand, uh, the doctor. But I want to touch on that whole segment where they have sex here. I mean, the first thing that we should have seen right after that sex scene is the guy in a hospital bed with at least a few ribs broken, if not anything else more sensitive, shall we say. Nah, fuck it, I'll say it. He would have ended up with a broken dick, for sure. We see multiple times in the show that Seahal can control her powers. Why would it be any different during sex? Which is something that she doesn't exactly do all the time anyway and wouldn't have time to practice in order to control her strength. But instead we get a cringy scene in the morning where the doctor seems almost disgusted that he has to talk with a normal woman and not with the mighty Seahulk. I mean, come on mate, you just had sex with a giant green animated monster. You're the problem here, not her. The show really has no respect for Jane Walters. There is an episode where she's fighting a court case and she has to bring former dates of her in order to prove that she used the name Seahulk and she has to suffer through the utter humiliation of her private life coming out in public. Throughout the show, you can feel this bitterness coming from the writing. Having male caricatures propping a taller, bigger woman to be better than her normal human identity with no reason at all. And although Seahulk is being pushed constantly at being a better lawyer than Jane Walters, she really isn't. When Matt Murdock comes along in a court case, a proper lawyer, mind you, he absolutely demolishes her, simply by doing just the work and prepping for the trial, which Seahulk never does. And also, there is a myriad of ridiculous scenes that are supposed to be funny, but they're just cringe-induced insanity. Seahulk twerking in the office? I mean, what the fuck? Who the hell thought that would be a good idea? Great way to lose all respect from your co-workers and any lawyers, cops and judges when they hear about it. But yeah, Seahulk doesn't care about these things because it's a comedy, well, comedy in quotes. And the idea of respect and decency simply doesn't matter here. Finally, Seahulk has an idea for a comedic lawyer TV show where your character as a superhero is just fine. We already had Daredevil in a more dramatic and serious tone and it would work really well to have something that goes in the opposite direction with a tone that is much more light-hearted and comedic. But in the end they screwed up. You have a story where there aren't really any stakes at all. Seahulk doesn't face any difficulty with her life or her powers. Whatever problem arises, it quickly resolves itself. Jane Walters loses her job? That's okay, she finds another. She's a terrible lawyer? Eh, no problem, she gets the Lawyer of the Year award. In the final episode, she doesn't like where the story is going? Fine again. She just stops the story altogether and forces the writers to give her everything she wants, including Daredevil as a boyfriend. What an absolute clusterfuck of a show. Seahulk is a character that does nothing meaningful, fucks up all the time, but gets all the rewards in the end. But I guess this is the state of MCU right now, saturating the market with soulless content just to make a buck.